Hello, this is Victor Dobrin. And I'm Cheryl Cook. Welcome to our podcast. And by way of introduction to today's podcast, we will be discussing a, a meeting or a gathering held on February 22nd, 2023. And this was at the, <clears throat> excuse me, what they call the Northport Safety Complex in West Villages. And here's the agenda. Let me scroll down. And it, this is presented as being put on by Northport Forward. So Victor, I was only there for part of this gathering. Why don't you tell us a little bit what happened? The presentation was carried out by the city manager, Mr. Fletcher, Jerome Fletcher, and comprised of uh, high level uh, uh, presentation of the city, high uh, referring to services, tax rate, economic growth, and then it entered a territory which is kind of uh, in the center of the people in the minds of uh, both the city uh, on both parts of the north. Uh, no, yeah, no, okay. Yeah, just you, yeah, you have to talk. Victor, I was only there for part of the gathering, which is at the very beginning, which basically encompassed the presentation. So why don't you tell us what happened after, during this Q&A session? Yes, uh, most of the people referred to the, there were questions actually during the presentation and after pertaining to the high level uh, presentation made by the city manager, Mr. Jerome Fletcher, which referred to services of the city, the tax rate, economic growth, and then most of the part was about uh, the annexation, a topic in the center of the attention of the people of Northport. So I like to refer to both of them, if you agree. Sure. So the first part uh, uh, refers to the service level and we all know that the city is the biggest municipality in Sarasota County and uh, let me let me go ahead. very briefly just to make sure everybody understands a municipality is a city Correct. Um, the four cities in Sarasota County are Northport City of Sarasota City of Venice and part of Longboat Key Correct. Okay. Uh, Long Quaki is a unique situation, but uh, uh, just big level, a high level uh, presentation. County has about roughly over 600,000 uh, citizens, I mean, uh, people who reside permanently here. Mm -hmm. And two thirds of those are unincorporated county, which unincorporated county acts as a super municipality and provide services as any other municipality. Many people are transplants from different parts of the country, so they are not familiar. But technically, I have my brother living in a part of just outside of Venice, and he gets the water, the sewer, uh, police, uh, uh, fire, fire uh, uh, you know, garbage, <laughs> collection you know uh, and and so forth directly from the county so we have neighbors both sides of the city which have the same uh, concept of even charlotte county gets the same kind of services this is unique for florida versus other parts of the country and and i i don't think people realize we in the city of northport also pay for the sheriff correct now sheriff it's uh, <laughs> part of the state function. Oh. So sheriff is not linked to any municipalities in Florida. So every citizen, regardless if they are part of a municipality or just unincorporated county, all of them, they are being assessed for the sheriff. Right. So the unincorporated provide the so-called police services by using sheriff deputies and their resources are enormous. They even run the 
prison. Hopefully nobody needs it. <laughs> but but uh, technically they are well uh, fitted to provide the services. Mm -hmm. They they uh, are plugged into state agencies so they can, uh, you know, more crimes uh, do occur. They can expeditiously get help and connected, you know, come to a better conclusion faster. I'm not saying that we have a good department of police in the city of Northport, but so other cities as well. And and also the the county sheriff's office has much more extensive, um, I don't want to call them departments, but services. For instance, they have helicopter services and they have, they are in animal control. They have the animal control services. They have the a more extensive and more sophisticated lab services for forensics and things Correct. like that. Correct. So, so all the counties, the cities, and benefit from that. But what what the point is that everybody is protected well in Sarasota County. That's the message. So with respect to the other, so again, all the municipalities, they do a good job, okay. in my opinion. Yep. And you mentioned them, yep. what they are. They are only one third of the whole county, and if you think about Siesta Key, Palmer Ranch, uh, you know, uh, going uh, to Lakewood Ranch mm -hmm. and so forth, or so going here in Inglewood, uh, you know, Boca Royale, or uh, in the, our backyards here, uh, Grand Palm, uh, Sarasota National, all of them, they are getting the same services, but from the county. Yep. So, Victor, you mentioned something about low tax rate that Mr. Fletcher spoke on. Yeah, well, see, uh, the comparison, I've seen it in a few years of budget uh, reviews of the city. Uh, I'm not disputing that we are not on the same level as Bradenton or Honkos, but when you can compare with the our neighbors, if you go to Charlotte or if you look to Venice or Sarasota, you'll find that there is a difference. And why is that difference? It's a historical problem, the way the city was set up. And uh, remember the book, The Swamp Peddler? Mm -hmm. yep. uh, it, it, it was published by the Jace, Jason Blake. It's an excellent book about the history of development of Florida by employing the general Development Corporation, which actually platted uh, a few huge communities in, uh, and all they suffered by the same in Florida. And all they suffered the same thing. If you go and look, look one of the cities that is compared here and the low tax rate is Palm Coast. Yes. And actually, uh, two of the city manager or assistant manager of Northport came from that, so they have the same setup there. Ah, right. Lots of roads, unmaintained roads there, because it was pre-plated, so there are roads, empty streets, undeveloped land, which increase the burden, you know, for maintaining uh, certain things, such as drainage and uh, roads and so forth. So, getting back, in order to do a fair comparison, you have to look at the tax rates with the neighboring community. And I don't have the numbers in front of me, but every time, every year, when I look at the budgets, there are differences. And none of them, they took that uh, strange pass to increase in one year, uh, you know, in the 30%, you know. They all adjust and either decrease or maintain the same level because the tax rate, even if it stays the same, if the value of the property is assessed higher, the city or the county gets more money anyhow. Um, let me ask you this because this, it's a question that is constantly in my mind. The city of Sarasota is a wealthy city. They, in some respects, they have the enormous high rises. They have a, um, they have a very sophisticated cultural society the city of venice has the beach this long boat key obviously has these enormous condominiums what sets northport apart well northport uh, has been developed together with port charlotte and it was called northport charlotte so charlotte has the harbor and has uh, mm -hmm. you know um, the the village there by the harbor and there is new development going there so they have some more uh, touristic areas 
and uh, Northport uh, is trying to attract businesses as well as tourism with warm mineral springs but technically the city doesn't have the closeness to the beaches or to a big water such as Port Punta Gorda and, and Port Charlotte uh, along the bay there. So I think that what sets it apart it's vast undeveloped platted lots which will still have a huge number on the east side in the Yorkshire area where you know it's if you drive there you will see how how many empty spaces are. but the undeveloped portions are single family homes correct so so it sets apart because the city itself was being people at it was technically general development corporation didn't want to develop a city you know they wanted to sell land ten dollar down ten dollar a month and, and that was all they wanted to make money and they didn't care what's happening so technically it was more like a bedroom community where people come and if they need something they go to sarasota go to punta gorda there was not so that's why uh the problem with uh, the city uh, having the proper uh, resources and, and uh, rich sustainability war and there will be still there will still be there for a while sustainability you have to have an economic engine of the city which would chip in to the revenue streams rather than supporting the government just from the homeowners so right now we are there because the city was pre-platted pre like 90 plus percent uh, residential and um, yeah there was some progress uh, and uh, but that's still insufficient and when we get down to the portion of this gathering regarding the de-annexation then we can start talking about the disparities between the city of Northport and West Villages. So give me just one second. Okay, Victor, I had to change my graphics. Now we will be discussing economic growth. And this is according to the flyer uh, that people can see on the screen. I want you to tell me what, you're in, what you understand from all of your research as well as what did Mr. Fletcher say during this gathering on the 22nd? Yes, uh, we was brought up the economic growth, uh, but we all know that uh, the most allocated land uh, for certain commercial mixed usage land uh, is uh, in uh, the master plan community of West Villages which is an independent district. And what uh, is kind of disheartening that in a such message where it was called Northport United, <laughs> it was the first time and it was odd to me to even mention legacy yes. Northport and then Welland Park. Um, uh, Welland Park, it's a marketing initiative and the developer probably will succeed in in brainwashing people and saying you are in Welland Park, not West Villages. But West Villages is actually a unit of local government which has limited power, not exactly as the city, but they can do anything except zoning and police. But they can do anything, can provide water and so forth. And we'll get to that because okay. there were some, they call it uh, um, truths and myths and, or facts, <laughs> and we'll get to that. Yes. But getting back to the economic growth. so. We should not refer the city legacy and the other part because you are already divided. So if you have a message and you are trying to do a little bit of propaganda, which happened, has to has to be done in a different way. Okay, and you, you just touched on something, and this first page that is on your screen, on everybody's screen, I want to I'm underlining now legacy Northport. That's the first time I've ever heard of that. I never heard it, but you know, the, the interesting fact was that there were some people in the audience which are saying they are part of the group which is preparing this kind of message. They already were talking about Northport legacy and so forth. So every time I get into these words which no definition was given, it means that there was some, some uh, mind 
preparation for certain people. And when I say my preparation, I usually, and again, nobody should be offended, but brainwashing, yes. it does happen. It right. happened in different social systems. It happens today with our media and newspapers. And it's sad when this message comes from the city. Why do we want to divide legacy? And it, that's strange to me. And uh, let me bring up two points that I've noticed in the past couple of years, that in the city, and I am separating the city from West Village as a Wellham Park, and in the city, we have what general development included neighborhood commercial nodes. And the whole concept was you'd have these little walk-up areas where people could go from their neighborhoods and go to these areas and now shop and yeah, exactly. Well, they removed some of the uses, so and they mainly Jill Luke was behind what I noticed, and some of the uses were removed. Now east of Toledo Blade, there will be no gas stations. Uh, okay, so people don't like gas stations for one reason or another. But let me tell you something. We're going to go to Charlotte County because Charlotte County is six minutes away. Yeah. So you've already lost unity of the city and you've already lost tax dollars. Correct. I mean, uh, as it, everybody knows that the surtax, the one cent the referendum that we approved uh, this past November, it gives us... Uh, a, a strong stream of revenues which goes it is divided between municipalities and the unincorporated according to the population so the more you consume and pay local tax the more you get back so that's a way to to support your local uh, community so yeah it would be good to have uh, you know I don't see any way to move in or to have uh, mobility in, in the city without gas station, or probably there will be a combination of gas and electricity station in the future, but conversion will happen over time. Right. Uh, but gasoline won't disappear during my lifetime and probably, you know, as long as we are walking on earth. But uh, getting back to it, yes, it's a need. You identify a need which is kind of wiped out by the stroke of a uh, commission, you know, not to allow such. Uh, why do I have, specifically in cases of a hurricane or something, why do I have to go and stay in line of uh, uh, other places, at least yeah. for a limited time? I am I'm local, I can rely on that, and the most uniform distribution of those kind of supply and uh, resources is available, the better for the people. And the second thing that I noticed, and I kind of comically, because as a blogger, you're supposed to bring in some humor, and I comically called it, let's help Mel market Northport. And what they, what they, it, it's almost like it's a search and rescue or a searching mission. They don't really quite know, they being the people elected to office since November 2016. They're, constantly trying to find the image for Northport. Well, let's help Mel Market Northport was all about. They want to identify separate neighborhoods and separate the separate, separate <laughs> And I think that's against the United States Supreme Court, isn't it? You're not cor allowed to segregate. Correct. I mean, uh, you know, the message should be a united, not segregation. Uh, and also, uh, because talking about economic growth and not having the, the infrastructure, uh, so this infrastructure means transportation, which is uh, sufficiently to support not only residential but economic activity at a higher level. And then it's the water and sewer. Uh, no corporation is going to come and develop without having that. And on that one, we can do a one-time podcast because that's a challenge the city had and still has. And that was actually deterrent for economic growth, even in those nodes such as uh, people know where Sumter and 75 as well as Toledo and 75, uh, there are public lands owned by the city and they could have been developed should the water would have been there a longer time ago. And Victor, you were talking about the water and sewer. I was talking about the different neighborhoods being identified. 
And I don't want to intimate that there is literal segregation as this in the 60s. What I'm trying to say is once you start identifying certain neighborhoods, when people move in, they're going to have little questions about, well, I want the neighborhood that I heard was, you know, where's the water or, and I'm not saying coastal water because we don't have any coastal water. There is no port. But once you start identifying neighborhoods, to me, that gets into some very tricky verbiage. And based on what I've seen in the past throughout my life. So you were also talking about um, the infrastructure for that businesses are going to expect when they move in. But we also know that water and sewer in Northport is a huge issue. I don't know what percentage of the people are on either side, but should it be left up to the people, the residents, to bring in water and sewer at the convenience of the businesses? Because we saw that in the Madagascar area. And I'm tr currently trying to find one particular memo that was sent out by former utilities director, Ricky Newkirk. And in that memo, he mentioned they were going to take the funding that was directed towards that project, which was about a million dollars. They were going to redirect, they being the city, was going to redirect the funding to Toledo Blade in order to attract, possibly attract businesses. And then that funding was switched to more mineral springs. So the people that did want water and sewer and were willing to pay for hookup, et cetera, have been obviated by warm mineral springs. So the question is, it's a roundabout way of asking my question, if, for instance, people do not want water and sewer, and we now know that the city is going to force it on us and it, at the cost of about a billion dollars, how much of that is going to be helping businesses instead of businesses having to pay for water and sewer infrastructure? Uh, this is a tricky question in the sense that we know that there is resistance from those people who already have invested in their septic uh, and water individually. And uh, uh, there are other neighborhoods which they really want. So I, I think that the commission has to have the bandwidth to listen to the population. They are elected and they are there to make the life easier for the people, not to put unneeded uh, burden. Uh, but what you gave as an example, a kind of shuffling around the funds which are promised for a neighborhood and then allocated to another project in the same area, but then moved to another pet project of certain commissioner and some special interests, developers mainly, it's not the right way to inspire, inspire confidence or uh, a good future for the city because, again, you have to listen to the people mm -hmm. and when you make such investments, of course, if there are neighborhoods along these investments for the, uh, because the city will need to spend money, you know, to take some uh, water and sewer lines to different parts of the city. It's, it's, it's a question of when, not why, because it's, it's going to happen but has to be a balanced way, a balanced approach, respect the, the people's rights and try to do the right things also for, for businesses. But um, we have to look at other neighboring, uh, such as Port Charlotte uh, or Charlotte County, how did they attract you know, their uh, customers or uh, uh, businesses? Because there might be incentives of one way or even uh, from the state and other things. If we have the space, the proximity to certain parts of the, uh, this part south, south uh, west of Florida may entice the businesses to come, but they have to be given certain things. And I don't know if the water and sewer uh, should be invested 100% by the city, but I don't see any other way uh, F, uh, ins, you know, getting businesses to to have a future here if you don't have that infrastructure. So it's a tricky question. I, I don't have an answer. Right. Well, and just to go back to what our main topic was, is this meeting, and we can still see it on the screen, and it's all about United. Well, I have seen se different sections of the state where water and sewer issues are put out for referendum. That is uniting the people. 
they get to vote and choose whether or not they want water and sewer. And then the city has to adjust. If you can't bring in businesses because the people voted against water and sewer, well, oh well, adjust yeah. your... But some of the people don't know that the water and sewer is so... Uh, uh, is not reaching the majority of, of the city. You know, remember there are always 70,000 platted lots and only a percentage, you know, have like 30% access to water and much less to the sewer. Uh, and, and that's very low for a city, but did it work? Well, it works because people had to develop that way. Uh, but I will not go and force the people to convert after making their investments uh, uh, in things that they don't need right now. But see what other, whenever possible, you know, get other funding. But people are not having millions of dollars to invest in, in certain things that the government may want to impose on them. Up to a billion dollars, almost a billion dollars. And the we have to quote store. from Barbara Langdon. And Correct. Who, is, who in the world is she? to make a decision to force us to pay a billion dollars. She didn't campaign on that, nor did any of the other people there. So, and I know that you have to take, that's why you're in office, is to make the hard decisions. But if, if it's all about uniting, which is our discussion today, and how is the city, they're boasting about uniting on this handout, how are they uniting with the people by usurping the people's power to choose whether or not they want to spend even more money. Who knows if people have the money? So, so again, uh, you know, our democracy is very clear. We the people, for the people. Yeah, a government from the people, of, you know, of the people, for the people. So uh, they have to listen more uh, and uh, not trying to be influenced by certain interests. So that's all. All right, Victor, now it's your turn. We're going to talk about the, this is actually the flip side of the flyer that we received when we went into this gathering at the city's complex in West Villages. And it's called Deannexation Myth and Facts. And I'm just going to let you take it from here. Yeah, um, well, first of all, um, I will just start by saying that many people were brainwashed by the media as well as the local radio that actually the annexation happened by vote and uh, so forth. It never happened that way and very few people know that the county sued <laughs> the city of, and won in court twice, even in Lakeland, you know, the appellate court. After that, the, just a brief history. Can, can you give a little bit more detail about that? When, yeah. When did it happen? First? Well, the first uh, annexation, there were about three or four ordinances happened in 2000, and the county have sued in uh, 12th Circuit Court, and that there was the appellate court in Lakeland who quashed the annexation, and mainly was defective according to the state statute. So there is a special state statute which uh, governs annexation and de-annexation. And the county won based on two defects. Uh, actually, the two major uh, conditions which allow a city to incorporate that the land incorporated uh, annexed through these ordinances have to be compact mm. and uh, th therefore has no inclusions, no islands of mm. other municipality is incorporated. As of now, uh, that effect still exists because uh, the, the college, the South, uh, you know, Florida, uh, College in, 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 in West Villages mm -hmm. is, is a property or it's on county land. Mm -hmm. And now we have even the, the Brave Stadium, which was transferred technically, that piece of land it's under, uh, under the county. Many people don't know that actually that facility it's owned by the county. Oh, really? Yes, yeah. So uh, actually the biggest investment came from the county, from the developer, from the state, and there was four point something million dollars from the surtax, from the sale tax, 
which city had uh, due uh, from the county, you know, as disbursement of those funds, and that was pledged towards uh, the bonds which are issued to build that stadium. So it has to be compact and contiguous. Contiguity, it's another problem because if you go on um, on, on, on US 41, on Tamiami mm -hmm. Trail, from West Villages to the border of the city on US 41, there are about three miles yeah. to, to reach. Right. It's, it's a corridor of unincorporated. Now, the city has actually, on the other side of the river, on the city, uh, on the, you know, going towards Port Charlotte, uh, along the river, going towards Inglewood, both sides, there is a forest. Uh, mm -hmm. Miyaka forest and the other one uh, it is uh, you know more a na natural area but sandwiched between this and the west villages there are different inclusions uh, of unincorporated slivers of land so by the definition of contiguity uh, this could improve in court that it is contiguous and the county won but what happened uh, in 2002, um, actually, uh, they struck a deal with the county commission and the, uh, and the city commission to develop some, some interlocal agreement to provide services such as fire, water, wherever possible, and not to... Uh, during that time, that, that development, the agreement lasted till about 2006. In the meantime, the city has reissued incorporation uh, ordinances, but they have the same uh, defective uh, uh, traits. You know, they don't have that. Now, another thing, I, I just want the people to know the truth. Yes. It's not to influence them, but brain, brainwashing and propaganda happens every day. Yes. So knowing the truth, you know what to expect. And, and you're speaking the truth based on documents. This is all, everything documented. Uh, and it's only, uh, you know, anybody can find those, or those documents with the courts or... Um, Karen Rushing's office. Correct. Correct. Yeah. correct at the county level. Uh, that was a voluntary annexation because there were no developments here. So actually the... Uh, it was Thomas, uh, uh, Mr. Thomas had this uh, big uh, uh, corporation that owned uh, this, uh, you know, 12,000 acres, technically, mm -hmm. was was villages. So Is that Thomas Ranch you're talking about? Thomas Ranch, right. correct. I mean, it was, the investor group was called also uh, Force Quartered Properties, which yes. they still own um, bankrupt land here. In, Right. The downtown fourth area. quarter property that name is very yeah. correct and, and there was a local uh, law firm uh, which represented them and it's very well known that is that law firm so anyhow <clears throat> getting back to to today people have to know that that was a voluntary annexation nobody voted so that's uh, contrary to what was said on the radio in the paper and so forth uh, out now Nobody lie. voted. That was a lie. It was a plain lie, yes. correct. Uh, but coming back and coming from someone on the radio who they have a show and say that, it's disheartening. It, oh, yeah. You cannot trust anything after that. During your interview, he said. Yeah, be, because it was an attempt to, when you say something that you have done something that it was not even possible, then you, you are discredited. Yeah, where well, you should be. So, anyhow. Getting moving forward, uh, you know, then uh, people in West Villages were dissatisfied with the irresponsible uh, governance using the money for uh, different projects which are not needed at one time, uh, created a movement for the annexation. So, Victor, that was an amazing recitation of documented real history of West Villages. So let's now get into this handout that is on the screen. And okay, people can read the handout, they can download it. Tell us the, what you see in the document and make sure you tell us what was said by Jerome Fletcher. Yeah, I'll try to 
say what the message was, not his exactly words, but technically referred to this sheet of paper, and he mostly read and making uh, comments and answering questions. And with respect to, uh, it started with a few things where uh, I have to say that I, 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 I perceive it as a propaganda, how mm -hmm. it was delivered. Yep. And my belief is if you try to entice people to believe in your cause, you try to come clean with truly the facts, not to present myths versus facts, and then the fa your facts are myths themselves. So the myth about not saving on money, on uh, if the people will, will um, uh, the annex and West villages and, and I'm not here to promote the annexation but I'm here to tell the truth that's right so that's totally wrong mr. Fletcher is paid probably more than two hundred thousand dollars and if he is going to go back and search the public records they will see a memo an answer from from the former manager city manager where, is that mr. Lear correct yes. And where the, the, there was no actually, there was no way that uh, the people would not save money. And actually for 260,000, it was like 900. Uh, the average value of the house at that time, they were saying, when we add, add Valorum with the non-add Valorum, Overall, people will save about $900. Coming in front of a group of people who don't have that information and telling, not telling the truth, I consider it brainwashing. That's why I use this harsh word, because you have to stay on the facts. And that was a plain lie. I cannot say it. it. It was a lie. So people will say, now, <clears throat> they will say, well, uh, you'll be charged. Another thing was said, um, the, then uh, um, if you look at the second myth, they said, you know, the service is dumb so. Yeah, it says, um, Welland Park would receive the same or better services if it was not part of Northport, and he claims this is a myth. <laughs> Well, I appreciate. We have. I, I'm not saying that there are dedicated people who provide our services, but I know people who have um, our neighbors and unincorporated here. Very nice neighborhoods. They are not unhappy. There are people here. So these are people who lived with both services. Mm -hmm. They are now in West Villages, and they don't. They haven't seen any difference in level of services. And uh, by now, many of the people know that the sheriff. Uh, provided, an, uh, provided an affidavit that the police protection provided by the sheriff would not be any more lower. Right. And there is interlocal agreement between the fire uh, right. protection services. Again, it, there was lots of intended information. Now, I am not here to talk about pushing people to the annex. But if you want people to vote in a referendum against the annexation, then you have to come with true facts, not to constructed facts. So again, in one, it is true, I see here that uh, uh, I, I was part of the utility board and uh, I know at least one uh, community, La Casa, which is actually non-incorporated, and yes, they get 15% surcharge for the services. But let's look at, uh, because that was in the first part of the, it was mentioned a $100 million impact fees. Oh, right, it was under, right here, economic growth. No, no, it was under the first myth here. It was mentioned that the water and sewer plant. Oh, here it is. Now, I, I was the supervisor who approved the financing. Yes of these uh, water and sewer right. plants in West Villages. And there are three funding mechanisms. And Mr. Fletcher uh, and, and the other staff uh, uh, also misled the people how going to the county, this is going to mess up. Right. So from the onset of West Villages, there were certain agreement between the developer 
and the city and that kind of agreements could be transferred to to the county because the county will will do the same the county will not suck blood from here they will let the blood develop locally to make the community work mm -hmm. so the same thing with these taxes they are called impact fees and by the way the developer don't want to go to the county because the impact fees are higher in the county ah, see. so so i have pleaded that the city you know to increase the impact fees because they will help our infrastructure but they haven't you even offered to be on that special committee correct in, in, yeah I, I was but i was never invited but that's all, okay <laughs> so coming back to this saying that uh, the developer or the city will suffer that's not true this was an agreement which could be honored by the county and even get more money back to develop more infrastructure such as water and sewer so the first uh, water uh, you know reclaim water plant uh, it was paid with about 30 30 million million dollars bonds issued on the name of of the residents in west mm -hmm. villages there was additional funding from the developer till the impact fees which were paid by us right and they were put us, in this segregated being, fund us to come who? back it's us the people of west they, not, leaving residents right. in west village not the people in northport no that, yeah, that's, that's right. not because again a question was asked of mr fletcher how many how much money was invested and then he deferred it and the only thing mr yarborough could say well well, at the beginning, the, for the, I don't know how many years, we used a pipe, a, a water pipe, which was a sewage infrastructure coming to the west of the North Port, but then was paid uh, the additional infrastructure for this. So there was not uh, any investment. That was a piece of uh, infrastructure existing, which was hooked up into, and the city got more revenue because everybody who was hooked up and that it was more revenue to the uh, utilities because we know the water uh, fees we are paying are so high because of those fees you know i i i'm here since 2002 and in the city not on west villages and i seem to remember and i don't have the details in my mind but now that you said that sometime in the early 2000s there was there was a, bit, a big discussion about West Villages hooking up to water pipes that were already existing. And I know that there were some fake environmentalists that were getting involved, but is that what you're talking about? Correct. Okay, yes. I can go back and look But, but again, uh, I don't think, I mean, it was very clear that there was not money given or right. investment, additional investment. Uh -huh. So technically, there is a memo again when a public request made uh, of the city, how much money was invested and everything what the city owns in West Villages, it says in that uh, line, okay. an Excel spreadsheet, it was donated to the city. Ah, okay. so, so, so okay. again, so, but so, see, having this kind of coming to say that you provide facts versus myth, coming unclean, it's a bad thing to defend your cause. What, what was the audience saying? Well, a couple of people tried to raise the, those questions and the, the answers I given to you was uh, either that we use the pipe or, uh, you know, uh, we, there were 100 million in impact fees, but people didn't understand how that fees, who paid those impact fees. Mm. And, and the, the same arrangement could exist with the city. I haven't finished, however, right, know, yeah. to tell you about the developer. So right. developer put money, but I know as a fact, right. because I voted on those uh, resolutions, uh, when ordinances at, at, at the uh, and resolutions at the at the West Villages. When you were on the board, on the board That's of correct. West Villages, that the the district will issue additional bonds, uh, can or provide them a relief of assessments to the developer, which still owns uh, like maybe seventy percent of the land to be developed because West Villages will have up to twenty thousand dwelling units, which would be about forty. 40,000, over 40,000 people and more. 
So getting back to this, there is another on this page uh, uh, statement about 25 and 50 percent. And okay, let me let me break real quick. 